Yes. Thank you and welcome back to another episode of Black History Every Day. Here we are with the Glowing Up Black podcast. My cousin, Danielle. Hey, guys. And her dope husband, Eric. What's good? What's good, y'all? This is the Black History Every Day Women's Edition. We play this game just like hip Je Jeopardy, but it's a little hip hop version. So we need to, first and foremost, you got to have a sound. What's your buzzer sound going to be, Danielle? Danny? <laughs> Hey, Eric, what, what buzzer sound you got? <laughs> <They don't. laughs> nice. That sounds like the wrong <laughs> But it's sharp and quick. It's going to come through the mic fast. All right. Okay. <laughs> our our uh, categories today are politics as usual, Ida B. Wells, and world changes. All right. Ready to get it started? Let's go. Ready. Let's get it. I'm going to set it off and choose the first category for us. Politics as usual for 100. She was appointed Secretary, Secretary of State in 2005 and thus became the first Black woman to serve, hey, to serve as Secretary of State. Who you got? Okay. Who is Condoleezza Rice? Condoleezza Rice. Ow. Ow. I'm coming out hot. I'm coming out hot. The board is yours, Queen. Let's get to it. Okay. Um, I will choose when I see the board. <laughs> I don't know what happened? I, I lost the board. You will choose. Oh, okay, go. I'm gonna choose. Let's say politics for three hundred. Politics is usual for three hundred. Politics is usual for three hundred. Founder of both Fair Fight Action and New Georgia Project, organizations focused on addressing <laughs> voter suppression. <laughs> Focus on addressing voter suppression and voter registration. <laughs> when does it count? At the end. Who am I here first? Who's here first? No, who am I here first? That was me. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> <laughs> who is Stacey Abrams? That's not fair. <laughs> First, of all, that's, first of all, that's my spelling sister, Stacy. So hey. I should be able to my spelling sister one. too. I'm with the Morehouse. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Shout out to the colleges, yo. <laughs> yes, sir. HBCU grads. HBCU yeah. grads in the building, yo. Glowing up, glowing up. Black podcast is repping hard. Uh, Eric, you got 300. Danny, you are down with 100. That's so unfair. The board, the board you know, is yours, sir. Question. <laughs> All right. All right. Ida B. Wells for 100. You're going to have that one. Ah. Ida B. Wells is an original founder of this organization she later was forced out from. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Uh, it looks like this one is going to. NAACP. What? Should have known that. Ida B. Wells is the original founder of the NAACP, but she didn't like the pursuit of where they were going as far as the uh, civil rights. Civil rights asked for inclusion. Ida B. Wells was early on it. She wanted us to have our own. She didn't want inclusion. She didn't want black people being allowed to the white owned restaurants. She wanted black people to have their own restaurants. Mm. Wow. I don't know who's gonna do this movie. Do? I don't know who's gonna. I don't know who's gonna tell this story. I don't know who's gonna do this movie, but it's gotta happen. It's gonna have to be one of us. They're not gonna. It's gonna have. To, it's gonna have to be one of us. Come on, the board is still yours, brother E. Let's go. Uh let's say world changes for one hundred. World changes for one hundred. At the tender age of six, this young queen advanced the cause of civil rights in November nineteen sixty when she became the first African American student. To integrate into an elementary school in the south okay <laughs> deep breath <sighs> all right count to five <laughs> who, who is ruby bridges jill jill she's only 63 years old yo i know okay Perfect. that's not black history that's black now future, black present now. you yeah. know like she, somebody need, yeah, we need, I mean, there's been movies on her, but still, yeah. like, we need to know what's going on in her life. Like, let's lift her up now. 
she's um she's around still she does she still does speaking engagements yeah she's around i just want to like more on a national platform nah she needs to be on the glowing up black podcast y'all need to have a conversation with her that would be dope she needs to tell the that story that would be really dope yeah, nice. i agree i We're agree. still working on you know how to define glowing up and um, well, actually we're not, we know how to define it, but I would love to add, I love this, this platform, this black history every day. So the know. goal is to, to be able to, to take this platform and, you know, maybe it could be in schools. Remember how in school, remember how good it used to feel when the teacher would roll the TV into the classroom. Mm -hmm. Yes. We try to bring that energy back and we got something positive. We got black people, you know, speaking intelligently, speaking on facts outside of black history facts that they only share in school with us, but something right. different, right. you know? Right. The curriculum needs to glow up. Yeah, Eat with the bars, yo. <laughs> Eat with the bars. <laughs> Danny, the board okay. is yours, let's go. The board is mine, let's do world changers for 300. Mm. It's brilliant how a university lawyer created the blueprint used by Thurgood Marshall and Brown versus Board of Education. Created <laughs> the blueprint used. Um. Boom! Boom! Wait, was it? Um. Howard University lawyer blueprint. Boom! boom. <laughs> <laughs> what is the answer? Boom! Boom! Paulie Murray. Oh. Uh, sister doesn't get a lot of credit, but she was um, she was on it early. On it, on it early. Um, she herself uh, fought within the education system to. Just to even get to Howard, you know what I'm saying? You know, um, she's a queen and a lot of people need to uh, research her and, and talk about her a little bit more because um, we give a lot of that credit at the Supreme Court level to Thurgood Marshall because he was a Supreme Court justice, but Paulie Murray has uh, definitely helped get him on that platform. And uh, shouts out to her. This is always getting it done. Yes, yeah. indeed. Sisters getting this done, and this episode is dedicated to all y'all sisters out there getting it done. Right now, the score Danny 200, Eric 300. Yeah. Danny, the board is still yours. We're you all got? winning. Okay. <laughs> Let me have politics as usual for, for 400. I know. I know it. <laughs> Going for the gusto. This queen is the first woman to run for president. She broke political barriers by running for <laughs> Congress and becoming <laughs> America's first black Congresswoman. Down, down. I heard, I heard every first. I heard every first. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. But my my buzzer is longer. So I don't think you heard him first. He just finished first. <laughs> but mine is I mean, his is brum, brum. mine is duh, 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 duh. like that's a lot. That's you're right. You're right. Go. You're no. Right. No one chose. No one told you to choose that. But <laughs> it's good because moving forward in future episodes, we're gonna see people choosing sharper, clearer right. buzzers for themselves, and it's gonna make only for a better, a better production. But so let's go. Answer? Let's go, Danny. What the answer, answer is my soror, Shirley Chisholm. Disqualified. She didn't use the answer to the question. Who is Shirley <laughs> Chisholm? That's not fair. To set me up. Okay, <laughs> this is the problem. No, no, it's not the problem. That's what, that's what we do here on Black History Every Day. We we play hardball. We don't give our participation <laughs> trophies, right? Because we I mean, black I people for my ability to answer that question. Though. We are we are black people living in America. Ain't nobody giving us nothing for free. <laughs> everything everything has to be earned. Even and though other people get stuff it. for free all the time. We're not worried about other people. We won't we only, dwell on that. No, nope, we only worried about us. We're not worried about that. We're not worried about that. Shout out to Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm, little known fact, in, uh, in 1996, she's the first president I ever voted for. I had to write her name on the ballot, but I wasn't rocking with either of the options at the time. Wow. You said 94. It's 96. 96. Yeah, that was the first presidential election I voted for. Uh, Dolan Clinton. Dolan Clinton, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wasn't rocking That's with either one of them. Cool. 
And uh, I remember um, back then I did go to college. I was going to University of Maryland and um, and they- uh, Eastern Shore? Uh, it was, no, it wasn't Eastern Shore. It was uh, another remote site. It was through, it was through the military. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my uh, history teacher, he was like, oh, did you really? What do you know about her? Tell me. He was so like enthusiastic. <laughs> I was like, we're not doing this. We just relax. You're from New York? Oh, Biggie or Pac. I'm like, just stop. That's bro. <laughs> Isn't she from Queens? I think she's from Queens. Too. She's, she's a miss from Queens, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, new Shirley <laughs> Chapman State Park. <laughs> Over on the BQE. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yep. is, she does have a state park. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Man, imagine what she would do nowadays. Because she was really black on the inside. Really what black. to her? I mean, you know, politicians just, get older and they get phased out, especially when they, especially when they're not white men. You can't age and be black as a woman. Yeah. All but right, the so board is still yours. Let's the go. The board is still mine. All right. Let's just do politics. Now let's do politics for 200. Politics as usual. Wow. She was the first <laughs> African American woman elected to the U.S. Senate. <laughs> Eric, he's, he did it. He said it already. I did it before the question. I was being facetious. Did you the question? Oh, he was being what? Facetious. Oh, that's a big word. We're going to look that up. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, who is elected to the U.S. Senate? Carol Mosley Braun? Ooh. Wait, 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 wait. You got it. Oh, oh. I was right. <laughs> I you were gonna... you can't take it back. Oh, so <laughs> Eric, you letting Danny, happened, you let you letting Danny shine because it's women's history month. Oh, I see you, King. <laughs> I like it. I like what you're doing. I like what you're doing. I like it. You're a real team player. I like oh, it. Yes. Come on, Daniel. The floor is still okay. yours. Uh, Ida B. Wells for 200. <laughs> Ooh. After being fired from teaching, after being fired for, six for teaching for after six years, Ida B. Wells acquired a partnership in the blank newspaper. Burr, 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 burr. The slaughter continues. Go ahead. Is it the free speech newspaper? <laughs> bullet, 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 bullet. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> she was a partner in that in that in the free speech newspaper not just uh she didn't just work there that's what i like about that mm -hmm. like you know coming from teaching it's not a bunch of money to be made in teaching but she was able to save up a little pennies at the time her, she lost both her parents mm -hmm. and and a sibling to uh polio i believe so she was 16 years old well, she started teaching, so she's only 22 years old, and she saved up her little pennies and was able to uh, get a partnership in the newspaper. So, wow. that's how Ida B. Wells, y'all. I think she's a very important uh, entrepreneurialism. Man, come on, fam. What are we doing out here? What are we doing out here? Come on, Dane, let's go. World changers for 200. Dun, 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 dun. From 1890 through 1897, she edited Women's Era, the first newspaper published by and for African American women, founded the Women's Era Club. Women's Era. Yeah. Josephine St. Pierre Ruffin, you thought you had it. You I didn't know, know, know the answer. I didn't know. <laughs> Another entrepreneur. We never heard of this person, so thank you for bringing it to us. I'm here for you. I'm you got all the trivia. Is she is Josephine American? Uh, I I know I don't I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Um, I'm gonna do a, a separate video and, and and talk about her and shout her out for uh, for uh, Women's History Month. But she has a she has a great story as well, and I oh, wish okay. I, I want more people to learn about her. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to give it all up here on this on the on the platform. I want people to be able to walk away from this and you know do some of their own research as well. Yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Okay, 
Let's do world changers for 400. <laughs> now, e, let me tell you something, King. If she get this, right? If she gets it, you done. Like <laughs> we have to wait till the question is done being said. Otherwise, we can just throw it out there, right? All right, fine. No, nah, no, you don't gotta play by the rules. This is black history every day, B. You gotta fight. In 1853, she founded Canada's first anti-slavery newspaper, the Provincial Freeman. The weekly publication encouraged blacks to flee America for their freedom. What's your sound? Jodon. Is it Marianne Scad? Ah, <laughs> with the Marianne guess. Shad. Did I get that wrong? <laughs> ah, it's close enough. Shad. You are in the back in the game, baby. Hey. Yeah. Back in the game, baby. No, that was for too much money. I need to. Uh... <laughs> He's still waiting. <laughs> wow. I had to pay Wales for the three hundred. Oh, for the tie. In what year did Ida B. Wells self-publish a red record, a serious statistical treatment of lynching in the United States, which could not be refuted? Yes. Was it or what is um eighteen ninety? <laughs> okay, a record ninety five. <laughs> hey, hey, nail in the coffin. That was nail that was in close. the coffin. Wow. Damn, son. Thank you, honey. You gave it all you got. <laughs> Ida the, B. Wells, 400. The, okay. the summer of 1892, Ida B. Wells advised that the blank rifle deserved a place of honor in every black home. The blank rifle? Mm -hmm. uh, the shotgun rifle? I don't know. <laughs> the Winchester rifle. Uh, the Winchester, the Winchester rifle because it was reciprocating. The shotguns, you gotta charge it and you know you fire and charge, fire and charge. Uh, the Winchester rifle at the time was the only rifle that you just had you it wasn't magazine fed just yet. You can still load like three or four rounds in there, depending on the size of the round. Boom, boom, and bang, ch -ch bang, ch -ch bang. So yeah, the Winchester rifle because it was the it was the first reciprocating rifle at the time. Okay. That's why. I, yeah, exactly. It, yeah, the more rounds you can put down range, the better chance you got to survive in the conflict. And that's a uh, that's something I learned after being in the military for over twenty years. But who am I to say? You know, what I'm saying I'm bringing a, a soldier's a soldier's mind state into that, and you know, just thinking about how elected officials now want to take weapons away from us, and how scary that is. Well, here's my question: Do you believe in gun reform? Like, does everybody need a you know they call them a weapon of war, like a semi-automatic rifle? Like, is, should AR-15s be accessible to everyone? To everyone mentally capable, yes. To uh, do weapons need to be reformed? Not really, because if you think well, about it, as Black people, the laws, you, you got to remember, as Black people, the laws only apply to us. Exactly. Right? And that's my point. That's that's my thing. So maybe you'll, right. so you'll you, 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 may, you may survive, like, with your life, but will you actually survive and be able to walk around in a situation you know in, in your life you know for your loved ones or will they find a reason for us who chooses to defend ourselves to they will find a reason to criminalize that because they always do and then you'd be put in jail for something that somebody else wouldn't be and that that's that's part of my thing so i understand both sides but you know yeah, i understand well. being a military person but i do think there's certain you know, perhaps uh, privileges that military people have that other people 
you know, don't have in that capacity. Yeah. yeah. So. And trust me, I believe there's some military people who served in the military and I think they need their, their second amendment rights revoked, especially if you storm the Capitol on January 6th, you definitely need a lot of your rights and all your military benefits need to be revoked. And yeah. as well as your, some of your, your second amendment rights need to be revoked. But for us people who are law abiding citizens, who want to protect our families and our loved ones, we definitely should have every opportunity to do so, especially if we're mentally capable. Yeah. But there shouldn't be any more new gun laws because all the gun laws are racist. That's a liker skill because, you know, people come in and out of mental capabilities all the time based on what's going on in their life. But, you know. These are facts. These that's are facts. just, you know, me as a former mental health professional. And that's why we need you more than ever in the world to go ahead and help us understand what, how to be better mentally, healthily, and hopefully with the glowing up podcast, you could break that, make that happen. You know, enter everyone into our lives. Check out their YouTube. Check out their Instagram. They got your own website. We sure Aya. do at glowingupblack.com. Yeah, glowingupblack.com. Check them out. This has been another episode of Black History Every Day, Women's History Edition. Y'all gotta come back and try again with me. Eric, you gotta redeem Definitely. yourself, bro. I got <laughs> he did pretty good. Yeah. Although, <laughs> although I feel like that last point last you gave point. to him. Appreciate it. It was a pity point. <laughs> I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for coming out. Yo, much love, much respect. Let's take yeah. it easy.